Okay, so this is a simple how to play. You log on, what do you do? And what do you do right before you log in, right? 12 steps, let's do it. Step one, you want to figure out what build you want to play. You can either theory craft yourself here and utilize the random enchant system in game, as you can see by going to open character upgrades and then enchants to search for things that will make your build work. So, for example, if you like the idea of being an ice hybrid or a frost hybrid, you might peruse around the random enchant section to figure out that there is an ice slash random enchant transforming lava lash into ice slash and making a frost hybrid build work. But if you just want more meta builds or you just just want to start at a baseline that other people have already figured out for you this is what i recommend the first thing i'm obviously going to recommend that you do the first thing i'm obviously going to recommend that you do is go to the mcdoubles discord go to the ascension wow builds channel and right there you'll have all of the builds i've worked on and theory crafted and you can either copy it or you can build on it and i'll constantly be updating this another thing you could do all of which will be in the description below is go to the ascension discord and if you scroll down number one you'll have the content creators channel which shows you all the different people trying to compete and you'll have my videos thrown in there as well as you can see and also if you keep scrolling down you have draft builds and this is where you can get some help also in the build help section on different builds in the game this is where people talk this is where sweats theory craft this is the place to go but other than looking it up on discord watching a video there really aren't that many guides out there it really is a theory crafters game so i highly recommend that you just put on your theory crafting cap and get ready to do some builds yourself the next thing you need to do is make a character right this is obvious but it does come with some implications first of all drain eye and blood elves are not allowed to be played right now on the alar that is the seasonal the main server the reason being is burning crusade is not out yet if you want to play these two races you need to play on the area 52 free pick realm keeping in mind though that the alar season 7 realm is the most popular of the two now project ascension is cross faction and this actually extends to almost every part of the game except for guilds and as a result i believe some of the world first type of races that they'll have for mythic plus and raiding but you can attack people on your own faction and you can basically group up with literally anyone you want for dungeons and so it really doesn't matter what your faction is what matters is what your racials are and depending on how much you care about min maxing you'll want to choose these very carefully so if you're going to be anything that's trying to pump out big big damage orc is always the way to go right because of their racial increasing your attack power and spell power if you're more of a pvp -er, you might want to go something like undead to avoid fear effects gnome to get out of movement and immobilization effects dwarf to remove bleeds and poisons or even human to remove stuns blood elf is also quite good if you play on the free pick realm because of the aoe silence that they have some other great options for pvp would be the tauren for an aoe stun and a more niche option with the night elf being the shadow meld allowing you to go into stealth for a, basically a permanent amount of time but you cannot move while this is happening another good pve option would then be the troll because they get increased melee and casting speed and really all that leaves us with is draenei which is kind of lackluster but they have a heal over time effect so maybe if you're a healer that would be good or you want a little bit of extra longevity i think this is also the faction where they give everybody an increased chance to hit with melee and spells as you can see so that might be good for your raid or group of friends as well but for the most part if you don't care about that stuff you just pick the race that looks fun for you and you jump right in now that you've made your character and also figured out what you wanted to play it's now time to roll for your preferred abilities you can have up to four abilities depending on what you start with at at level one and let me go ahead and show you how that works so you've made it in game right you made your character and you'll see a little glowing icon the draft mode menu here on the bottom you click on that and that gives you your first draft this season season seven is draft mode which means you start off at level one by drafting four different times one from a pick of three and i'll go over it real quick just to display it to you guys and at level 10 you'll get another ability and then every two levels after that you'll keep drafting so it's the same process up until you reach max and then you'll have options to redraft things that maybe you didn't like and hone your build so this is how it works you click on the three different cards you say you know what what? Bear form sucks. Stone skin sucks because I'm not a tank, right? Let me go Moonfire. You'll get another draft. You'll say, you know what? I'm going to go for a dot build. Let's Curse of Agony Moonfire. Okay, I know Moonfire has some synergy with Wrath, so that's quite good. And lastly, 
Well, I really want people to get off me because I do plan to do some PvP. So I'm going to get Frost Armor as well. So now you can see Frost Armor, Wrath, Curse of Agony, Moonfire. Honestly, not too bad for a fresh player's start. Now, if you hate this though, and you think, damn, this sucks. Is this really what my character has to be? You go to your inventory, you simply click your spell draft deck, and you can start from scratch. One thing to keep in mind is that there is a shop for this game, very similar to how WoW sells WoW tokens, but instead, you just get stuff outright. One of the things that you can actually get is what they call a dealer's draft deck. Now, the dealer's draft deck is something that you can either get off the auction house for gold or get off the shop that will allow you to roll every single one of your individual abilities at level one, basically guaranteeing you to get what you want rather than leaving it all up to chance. But that is the only situation where that can happen. Other than that, Everybody plays on the same playing field, randomizing, drafting their stuff, and hoping to get the best thing they can possibly get. The next thing you want to do is choose how you want to level. And this is not clear cut and simple like it is in retail WoW. There are multiple viable ways to level. Some are going to appeal more to a very, very go fast min max gamer. Some are going to appeal more to a more casual gamer. But I think that's part of the beauty of Ascension is that over time, and with enough complaints from me, uh, we finally got a game that is both very, very casual friendly and very very min max friendly let me give you some of the ways you can choose to level the first way I want to talk about is the normal way and we'll make our way from normal to the most extreme okay the normal way is PvE traditional WoW questing which you can of course choose to do the next thing you can choose to do is a special thing unique to Ascension called high risk PvP now this is something that your typical WoW player is not going to be very well accustomed to as it's a game mode in which you essentially lose your gear when you die and you can get other players gear when they die including stuff from their inventory so the reason that this is actually a viable way to level is number one you get better loot in high risk mode from random mobs as you're questing and number two if you do kill a player you get a ridiculous amount of xp sometimes equaling an entire level if not half a level depending on how high you are and that's very very rewarding especially if you're constantly running into people and if you're pretty good and you're winning more fights than you lose high risk mode will be offered to you as an option starting at level 20 so you do need to level from 1 to 20 the normal way first but if you need to activate it yourself or turn it off at any time you can go to any capital city here we are in Orgrimmar talk to a hybrid risk system guy always next to Nas Dormu always next to the command board and you click on them and you simply say I want to go high risk or I want to go no risk and it tells you all of the different things that happen as a direct result of that so the main thing here is that you have to prioritize finding and killing other other players this will most likely mean you become a criminal which is a special system also in project ascension that makes it to where you cannot feel safe in Orgrimmar or Stormwind because guards will kill you and players can kill you whenever they want so your new capital city becomes Gadgetzen or Booty Bay. There's also the Fel Commutation system that you can utilize to protect your gear. You'll get a quest at level 15 that tells you all about the Fel Commutation system but you'll find it in the Cleft of Shadow in Orgrimmar or the Mage District where the Warlock Trainer is in Stormwind. What you do is you come up to this, it also can be found by the way in Booty Bay, you click on it and then you click the piece of gear you want to save it'll bring up commute the slot it'll tell you how much gold you'll need to have if the game chooses to make you lose your helmet let's say in this example when you die you'll commute the slot and then if you have in this case 30 gold and 75 silver when you die if it was going to remove your helmet and give it to the enemy player instead it will remove the gold and you'll keep your item it's kind of like a crazy version of protect item prayers from runescape now the next way and this is going to be on the same topic of pvp is going to be the second fastest way to level and that is battle battleground leveling the requirement for this is level 10 so you have to start by traditionally questing from 1 to 10 and then you just do bgs until you reach max battlegrounds because of in part my advice uh, have been buffed with season 7 to give a lot of xp not only that but if somebody has an aura of xp which is a special shop item that can also be bought on the auction house that increases everybody's xp in the party or in this case in the entire bg on your team by 200 percent then you'll level even faster leveling in ascension is already faster than it is normally so you don't need that but bg leveling comes in at number two for the second fastest leveling as you can easily reach max in one and a half to maybe even up to two and a half hours depending on how often you win and how good you are at getting kills do keep in mind if you choose battleground leveling you get more xp for solo killing or for having very few players who nail a kill compared to if let's say eight of you all kill one guy because the xp gets divvied 
made up with everybody who earned an HK. The next way to level is the absolute fastest way to level, and that is dungeon leveling, specifically what we call in Project Ascension a 15 to 60 group. The requirement for this is level 15, so you can use the random dungeon finder, and around 20 to 40 gold. So this one does have a little bit of a barrier to entry, and so I would recommend you level with any of the other methods first, so you can build up at least 50-ish gold, and then buy what we need for a dungeon leveling run, which is two experience pots, which typically again range between, you know, let's say 15 and 25 gold each, or I average it out to 20. Sometimes you can get this done, by the way, with only one pot, but to be safe, you should always bring two. So you want to level to 15 by traditional questing, and then grab your XP pots, get into your group, and hope that at least one person in your group has an XP aura. Typically, the player who makes this group has an aura, and you can constantly find advertisements for these types of groups in world chat because people are constantly trying to level fast. This method can get you from 15 to 60 in only one hour playtime, and that is very, very quick indeed. Now that you've figured out what you want to play, what character you're going to play it on, and how you want to level, you need to look at the rarity of abilities that you desire for your build so you can start planning accordingly as you level so that you come out with something that's better than it is bad, right? So for example, if you're a frost build and you want Cone of Cold, please note Cone of Cold is a rare ability. And also keep in mind, all of the abilities have a border that designates its rarity, green being the least rare and yellowish orange being the most rare. Now in this example, because Cone of Cold is a rare ability, you would want to stay clear of other rare abilities that are less essential for your build, such as let's say Shadow Protection Aura, because if you pick the Shadow Protection Aura, you'll have less of a chance of getting Cone of Cold later on in your draft. So it's all one big game, I mean quite literally, but also a mini game within the game, so that you can get a better build than the guy next to you, simply by making better decisions throughout your draft. This gives you some way to control the randomness that is inherent to any kind of draft game mode. Keep in mind that the game generally pulls you towards having two legendaries, four epics, and a myriad of rare and common abilities, but because there are so many kinds of rares, and they're simply not created equal, such as in the aforementioned example with Cone of Cold and Shadow Protection Aura, you need to be very diligent in what you pick in the blue slot, because if you pick wrong, you may catch yourself getting very few of the things you need, because you picked too many things that you didn't really need, but you kind of wanted throughout your way to 60. So now you're done just doing random things besides actually playing the game, and it's time to do number 6, which is to just begin leveling your character however you chose to do so. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do as you're leveling is you're going to want to look for what we call random enchants. And the way to do that is by using a mystic altar like you see right here. Mystic altars can be found out in the world, specifically in places like the Hillsbrad foothills or the Alteric Mountains where Dalaran is right here. But the most common way to do it is to just go to a city. You'll often see them in Orgrimmar, Stormwind, Booty Bay, and sometimes even Gadget Zan. What you want to do is run up and click it and it will present you with the enchanting tab and all of your gear and all of the enchants you have on your gear. Now, random enchants are random because you find them on random pieces of gear in dungeons or through uh, some kind of satchel rewarded from PvP or simply by questing. But you can also click on a piece of gear like my tumultuous necklace of the battle and reforge it. If you reforge it, it gives you a random enchant, in this case the corrupted church enchant which is kind of neat, giving me increased shadow damage whenever I use holy spells. For the most part, enchants are going to be something you don't really use until max level, with it being a more advanced player thing to send some enchants to an alt to a new character and use them to give you a small advantage, sometimes a large advantage, at the lower levels. We've talked about things in previous videos, like Soul of the Warden, teaching you a very powerful ability, Fan of Knives, which does a bunch of AoE damage and can be used as early as level 1, if you can get it on a level 1 piece of gear. Or even enchants like Double Down, which allows your Sinister Strike to hit with both weapons, which is just going to be massive damage, and you can easily overcome the lack of combo points that it will generate with this legendary enchant, with a few select talents. But what I do want to do for the sake of this how to play guide is tell you guys simply how the mystic enchanting altar works. 
First of all, you have three different currencies, Mystic Runes, Mystic Orbs, and Mystic Extracts. You're going to have almost none of this when you first start out, but when you reach max, you'll get all of these, except for the Extracts, as rewards from daily quests, dungeons, and I believe even BGs. Now, Mystic Runes are going to be what you need to reforge. It costs one Mystic Rune to reforge one piece of gear. If you want, you can theoretically constantly reforge with your Mystic Runes and hope you get an enchant of your choosing, but most people unless you're trying to make money and that is a good way to make money but most people will elect to go to the auction house and simply look up let's say double down just by typing it in the search bar and it will show you all of the pieces of gear on the AH that have the double down legendary enchant on it speaking of legendary as I said there are four different rarities for the enchants in the same way that there are four different rarities for the abilities common rare epic and legendary you can use one legendary enchant and one of three different epics so you can have one scorched earth one fired up and one of another epic and you're done when it comes to blues you can use three blues per blue enchant so let me make this clear if you want totemic focus know that you can use it three times putting it on three different pieces of gear for up to 30 percent mana cost reduction on your totems but that's it and you can have as many blues or greens as you want. Now the mystic rune and reforging system is not just good for finding enchants, it's also good for leveling you up. You'll see I'm level 5, but if I click reforge, I get more and more XP. Eventually I will level up and I will receive a mystic extract. If I were to say want this powerful hammer of wrath enchant over here on my animated chain necklace, I could drag it over here and then click the extract button, spending one of my mystic extracts on this enchant. And now you can see I have powerful hammer of wrath as an enchant that is usable to me. If I wanted to put this on a piece of gear, that's where the mystic orbs come into play. I can click the piece of gear that I want the enchant on, click the enchant, it'll tell me it costs three, I say accept, and now my piece of gear has that enchant. And that my friends is how to use a mystic enchant altar. And this is very essential. Don't make the mistake I did back in seasons one, two, and three, where I thought the enchants maybe didn't matter that much as long as I was a good player and had a good talent build. They do matter, and if you don't have the enchants, you will get slaughtered by somebody who does have them, but again, this is basically a max level thing that adds extra kind of Path of Exile-esque progression and not something you have to worry about as much when you first start. Now the next thing you want to do is simply reach max level. Now that you've reached max level, what you want to do is do max level content, and I'm going to break it down by PvP content and PvE content. You can do both, but this is going to make it easier to explain, as there is a lot of different stuff you can do at max level in Ascension. It's not like Retail WoW, where you kind of feel pigeonholed into either Battlegrounds and Arena, or simply running dungeons and raids all the time. So I'm going to make this very quick and very easy. We're going to go over PvP options first. I'm going to give it to you in order, a bunch of different things you can do, and we'll just list it off. First and foremost, you can take the traditional approach. You can spam battlegrounds and you can do a special game mode which is 1v1 arenas for honor and also if you choose to do arenas for conquest points. I highly do recommend you do this just like you would in normal WoW to acquire enough honor or conquest points to give yourself a full set of PvP gear. On the topic of gear, you can also get something called Bloodforged gear in Project Ascension which is typically going to be gear that is either number one, PK'd off another player which means you killed somebody, you took their gear it became a blood forged version of that gear blood forged by the way being gear that has resilience and pvp power on it number two gear that you bought off the auction house as typically pve gear can't be bought off the auction house at max and instead you have to buy its bloody equivalent or three found out in the open world through the high risk game mode blood forged gear off the auction house is a very good way for new players to enter pvp but you do need to keep in mind it is often not as good as regular pvp gear due to a lack of pvp power and resilience in comparison to normal pvp gear but if you're a pvp'er you got to get your hand on that resilience and pvp power gear and spamming your bgs in your arena is going to be the way to do it on that topic you're going to want to go to the call board the call board as i mentioned earlier in the video can be found in any capital city booty bay stormwind or grimar even gadget zan and what you're going to want to do is click on it and do your daily for the day you'll see you'll have multiple options for battleground dailies you can only do one so you pick the one you want there's a dueling daily by the way 
people are always outside Stormwind and Orgrimmar dueling, and there's also going to be a 1v1 or a 2v2 daily. In this case, it was the 1v1 daily today, and as you can see, you'll get honor for it, some orbs, some runes, and some Marks of Ascension. Because I didn't mention this earlier in the video, let me make it clear. Marks of Ascension are acquired through daily quests, typically also from dungeons and other minor things you do, and they can be used if you go over here to Silas. Silas, once again, can be found in any capital city, and what he's going to do is give you the ability to, well, redraft through these Hand of Fates some of the abilities that you didn't like, that you didn't think were great picks before, so you have a chance at getting better stuff later on. Now, back on the topic of dailies, another thing you can do are City Siege dailies. Now, this is one of those things that is gate-kept by your faction, one of the only things on Ascension, because you won't have the same City Siege daily as somebody on the opposing faction. So, for example, you may be given a daily to kill High Tinker Mechatork, but your partner on the Alliance may have to kill Sylvanas. Other dailies you could do would be the high-risk versions of world bosses, in this case you could see Azeragos, or even Setis. Now, you'll see you get massive rewards, bloody spoils of war giving you PvP gear, that's very good, you get two, you get honor for it, orbs, runes, and a bunch of marks of ascension to hone in on your build. Of course, do keep in mind you'll need a raid for this, and you can often find people recruiting for them in world chat, but people try to get them done as soon as they spawn, so keep an eye out for it. Now, other things you can do would be regular high-risk daily quests that put you out in the open world in high-risk mode so you can compete against other high-risk players and potentially kill them and get their loot, but it is very, very risky. So, for example, if you come up here to the call board, you'll see these ill-gotten goods quests. These are often going to send you, as you can see, Tar Lords and High Risk, into the open world to kill creatures, grab their items, and you'll be getting good high risk loot along the way, which you can sell for good money, uh, and obviously you might find people to kill, or people might be there looking to kill you. Another thing you'll find while doing these high risk dailies are different nests that you can find and hidden caches that you can destroy for loot or bring special items to that you find in the open world to spawn a boss or just unlock it with a special key for better stuff. And if you kill enough elite monsters or just general monsters in high risk zones, I believe what will also happen as you can see in the background is a notorious monster will spawn. This is a much bigger, stronger monster that depending on your build and your gear may require some friends to help you be that will drop extremely good stuff that is often worth some money on the auction house and that's pretty exciting when it happens as well. One thing I highly recommend you do if you like high risk mode but don't want to lose your gear is you simply buy a burner piece of gear. You buy a burner set. You know, that's a set that you don't care about losing and you know what? You can upgrade this as time goes along. You'll see I have a lot of garbage in here. You might be wondering why and it's because I use this garbage often if I want to PvP but I know that it's very likely that I'm just going to get ganked by multiple sweaty players and lose all my stuff, which feels very unsatisfying when you're a solo player. Now do keep in mind, there are actually honorable combat zones in this game, and it'll often tell you which zone is honorable combat. I do believe they currently switch it from, you know, zone to zone at max level. Honorable combat zones are 1v1 only zones, and those are the only skill zones. If you're in a non-honorable combat zone, unfortunately, you need to be mentally prepared to get wrecked by multiple, you know, sweaty people in one big group, because unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's just how a lot of people like to do things. However, you can still play around this simply by picking good positioning, maybe taking something like track humanoids so you can catch them before they catch you, having a lot of mobility, or once again just being in a burner set of gear that you could care less about losing. Now another thing you could do is called the Crow's Cache. It's going to be a chest located in certain places in high level zones. It will tell you in the chat when a Crow's Cache is up. Now the Crow's Cache is kind of like Crow Fall, and if you've ever heard of that MMO, in which it requires you to be in a big guild, a PvP guild, and it's just guild v guild competing for a big chest with a lot of loot in it. Unfortunately, this is something that is basically blocked off and incapable of you playing as a small group player or a solo player. It's something that you do have to have a guild for, as I don't even think they occur in honorable combat zones, but I digress. Uh, that's something you do if you like to be in large discord calls with a bunch of different people. Another thing I could recommend, and the last thing I could recommend, is the Gurubashi Blood Bowl. Once again, they will advertise 
in world chat when this is happening. And what this means is you'll go to the Gurubashi Arena in Stranglethorn Vale when it happens, and the last man standing after a certain amount of time will get quite a lot of gear. Now the next set of stuff you could do would be PvE content, and up until recently I wouldn't have recommended it, but with a lot of new changes they did, namely the addition of the Mythic mode as well as Mythic Plus modes, I would say PvE on Ascension is much, much better, and literally in its best state ever, and I'm doing it constantly right now in my videos, which you can check out, playlist by the way, in the description below. But here's what you can do in PvE. So, first and foremost, you just hit 60, and depending on how bad your gear is once you hit max, which, by the way, means if you level the traditional way, you'll probably be fine. If you speed leveled, you'll probably be less fine, right? Depending on what your gear is at, though, you're either going to want to queue for normals or heroic dungeons. Heroic dungeons, I believe, require an item level of 60, whereas mythics require an item level of 64. You're going to want to acquire enough gear from these dungeons to get that mythic item level of 64, so you can start using the random dungeon finder to queue for mythic difficulty dungeons. You're always going to want to do the heroic daily for the day, and the normal dungeon daily, too, if you need the rewards. So, you can see the call board over there. If I click on it, I'll actually have different dungeons that I can do. It looks like I actually already have the quest. Adventurers needed, Stratholm Main Gate Heroic, and Stratholm Service Entrance. That's very unlucky. Sometimes it's the same thing, uh, but for the normal dungeon. And there will also be a Mythic. You can see that I actually have new ones here. A Mythic version of Blackrock Depths. And I actually have a Upper Blackrock Spire Heroic I can do as well. I believe if you do, let's say, the Mythic version of Upper Blackrock Spire, it now currently completes the lower difficulty quest quests for you, which it didn't always do, so that's a pretty big addition as well. Just like with the PvP content, you can also choose to do world bosses, which not only the boss itself drops a bunch of gear, but the PvE version of the quests will also give you pretty good rewards as well. You get only one extraordinary spoils of war, but you still get a bunch of marks and orbs and runes for, let's say, slaying a Zaragos or slaying the non-high-risk version of Cetus. There are also PvE daily quests, just like the PvP ones, but you don't have to be in high risk and care about getting killed by other players and that's literally all of the other daily quests outside of the the high risk ones I mentioned in the previous content section there's also by the way profession quests so a true artisan hide of the wild you make them what a true artisan can accomplish apparently and you get pretty good stuff 3,000 marks of ascension people will often get good at professions on ascension so that they can meet the profession daily for the day as well in this case for example I need 10 tiger's eye so if you were able to to acquire those 10 Tigers Eye quicker than other players, you could sell them for pretty massive bank on the day that this is the daily. And this can go for things that only a miner could get or only a skinner could get as well, like let's say iron ore or, you know, a specific type of hide off a specific animal. And so that's a good way for people that like to do professions to make money with them in a way that's not just plopping a bunch of stacks of crap on the auction house randomly and hoping it sells. Lastly, another thing you could do is raiding, which is, I know, right? Like raiding, that's the normal thing. I personally am not a huge fan of raiding because I think it's just a long, boring version of a dungeon, but I digress. Raiding is obviously something that is extremely popular in World of Warcraft. Project Ascension doesn't lack in this regard either, and it simply never has. It's just never been my thing. What you can do in raiding is, first of all, there are multiple different game modes. There's the regular mode, there's the heroic difficulty, and then there's also something they call Ascension difficulty, which is supposed to be an incredibly difficult version of the game that is highly tailored around all of the meta custom builds that you can play and the DPS that they would output. One thing you can also do, by the way, is earn Raiders Commendations when you do these raids, which is a type of currency that can be spent at different vendors, like this one in Booty Bay, and you can use those Raiders Commendations to get pretty good stuff from those vendors so that your raiding experience will be made just a little bit better if you don't end up nailing any loot off the boss. Now that you've done that, the next thing you want to do is essentially constantly spam those dailies and those dungeons or battlegrounds for marks of ascension until you perfect your build. If you didn't watch the PvP content section, I do want to reiterate that marks of ascension are something you acquire from your dailies, dungeons, and BGs that will give you access to a new vendor that you can find in places like Stormwind as well as in places like Orgrimmar and Booty Bay that will supply you with quests 
like this one, Specialization 1, Hand of Fate 2, to give you Hands of Fate, which allow you to redraft some of the abilities in your build the same way you did while you were leveling, so that you can try to hone in on a better version of your build and get rid of some of the dead weight. Next, something you could do if, let's say, you didn't enjoy the build that you made it to max with, or you did some of this content and decided that this build wasn't for you, is you don't really have to make a new character. Instead, you could choose to Prestige, or to use Tomes of Spec, or specialization tomes that will allow you to have a second spec and you can redraft a completely different build from what you had before. In the same vein, if you like your build but you want to relive the leveling experience maybe in a new way or try a new build, you can also use tomes of spec for the same exact reason, but in this case you can switch to that spec and keep your original spec for later and then just explore and relive that experience on your second spec. The next thing you're going to want to do is theory craft and or hone your builds, right? That's what my videos are. I'm constantly making new builds, constantly theory crafting my own way of doing things and trying to make a build that is fun for me, but also effective and beat other people. Maybe even think of things that other people haven't thought of yet. And that's the point of Ascension. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide video. A lot of you guys have been asking for it. And this is a pretty solid how to play Ascension guide for 2021 season seven specifically. It literally tells you step by step what you needed to do and yeah that's basically what anybody that just started the server would want. So one thing I need you to keep in mind, there are other forms of play for Project Ascension, other game modes. There's Iron Man mode where you can only play with yourself. <laughs> um, there's Resolute mode where you level at the slowest XP rates available, which is the regular rates. Survivalist mode where you can play with your friends, but only your little group of friends, other survivalist players, that is it. Nightmare mode where you take a ridiculous amount of extra damage and can get one shot by actual players with better stuff than you, but as with all the other aforementioned modes, you will get a reward if you are capable of making it to max with the restrictions that they put on you. And this often includes things like mounts, as well as titles, and just anything that lets you show off. So do keep that in mind. But guys, that is going to be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and to subscribe, but I will see you guys in the next video. McDoubles out.